Hello again. Right, I have been installing the point motors on this um, new junction that I've built. Um, so I thought I should sort out the control side of it um, with a control panel. So what I've done is I've gone on to, I just literally went on to paint on the PC. And I've drawn that up. It's nothing special. Um, it's very basic. Um, hence why the video is called making a basic control panel because this is probably going to be the most basic kind there is. So it's just printed on a piece of glossy photo paper. And what I'm going to do now, or what I need to do with this, is I've got these toggle switches which control the points. So I need to make some holes in this. Now, I have sort of experimented and you just cannot drill through this. It rips up and just goes crazy. So what I've got is these little punch things. Right, so I have a set of these punches here. They range from 2.5 to 10 mil, um, mostly in one millimeter increments, apart from the 2.5. So I've never used anything like this before. These were very cheap off eBay. So they don't even look very sharp, to be honest. But anyhow, so I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment on a on a spare piece that I've got. So I'm just gonna put a bit of softwood CLS behind it, and then hammer over the top. So I need a six mil hole for the toggle switch, and I have got some LEDs, and I was debating whether to use them or not because I've been playing around with the wire inside of it um, and they I can get them to work but it's weird it's hard to explain how I actually get them to show which track goes where the main issue being the double slips because because the double slips work quite weird um, and I'm still getting my head around them it's not as clear as saying when it's in that direction, the track's going to go in that direction, if that makes sense. So, anyhow, I'll carry on and I'll, I'll show you what I do. So what I did is I made the holes for the LEDs with a 3mm punch. And then what I've done is I've laminated it, just to give it a bit more rigidity and um, just makes it look a little bit better really so now so all the holes they're not actually holes anymore they are because they're laminated over the top so now I just need to make see I've done one already carry on making the holes for the switches right so there we go all the holes are uh, made using the punches is um it's an experience something i've not really used before um you gotta hit pretty hard um, to get it go through but yeah it worked it was better than the the experimental drilling i did the other day which just chews up all the paper plastic everything so yeah there we go right so now i've got to Obviously this could be mounted on a bit of wood, so I'm going to put it on the wood, mark through the holes, and then I can drill. Alright, so there's my bit of ply. It's slightly oversized. So what I'm going to do is... I've got it in the position I want it to be in. 
I'm going to mark one hole up in the corner, right in the centre. Then I'm going to drill that, fit one of the switches, and then that will give me a... It will kind of help keep it in place while I drill the rest of the holes, while I mark the rest of the holes and then drill them. Tidy up the edges with a countersink bit. switch so I've taken all the washers and everything off should fit through there nicely and then we've got one little nut so that will help keep that in position while I mark the rest of the holes and all the holes for the LEDs. So for the LEDs, um, they're five mil LEDs that I'm fitting. Um, so I'm gonna drill five mil holes, even though these holes aren't five mil. Those are the ones that I've laminated over. Um, Cause I don't want really bright lights. I might resist the LEDs a little bit more anyway, but I'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, so I'll Make sure it's square how I want it and I'll carry on marking. Right, so there we go. The All the six mil holes are drilled for the switches and next to each one there's a five mil hole for the LEDs. So I've lined that up over the top and it all lines up pretty good. So that's brilliant. Right, so now I'm going to fix all of these, there's 12 of these to go in. So I'll make a start on that. Right, I've got two of the switches in. As you're aware, I'm using the Megapoints um, system. So what this requires is like a common switch. So all of the bottom terminals of all the switches, if I put them all in the right, the same way, they're all going to be connected with each other and then back to the Megapoints controller. So they're basically going to share a negative supply, I think it is, if, I'm, if I understand it correctly. So that's where I'm going to install the rest of these and I'm going to solder in all of these switches. Which my soldering isn't brilliant. So, I probably won't show you that because I don't want anybody getting bad habits. Right, as you can see, I've cracked on and um, unfortunately didn't film some of this, but all the switches are in. I've connected the Megapoints controller. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because I have done other videos um, and everything is working. So, Obviously there's a lot of wires, servo wires going, going places. So how this will sit is, you can see the power lead coming out the side there, it's the black one, I will neaten that up and make it a bit more of a permanent fitting. But 
ultimately. That is the how the board is going to look. So I've not done the LEDs yet, but everything works. This one that my thumbs on now up in the top corner of the screen. That's the only one on here that where one switch actually powers two points. All the others are single like because these are double slips. So that's a double slip, that's a double slip and that's a double slip. Um, it was a bit too awkward to set it up like that and they all lead on to single, single points so I couldn't really do it. So everything else is single servos or single switches powering a single servo. But yeah, it all works. So just got to do the LEDs and um, I will just touch on how I'm going to do that. Right, so as we can see here, we have placed a 12 volt LED into the hole next to this point. So the positive goes to this point here or to this little tab here on the switch and then the the negative just goes to the same common negative that I've connected to all the other points so as I flip the switch you can see it lights up now obviously I'm limited of where I can have the LEDs I, it, obviously it'd be nice to have two LEDs on it um, I haven't found a way that I can wire it up like that um, maybe there is a way, not sure. But anyway, so what I think I'm going to do, or what, it's too late now anyway, I can actually change on the Megapoints controller which way that switch throws, which, so it, I can have it turning on and off that light how I want it to, basically. So which is nice. So I've just got to solder all of these in. 12 of them to do. Might make the wires a bit shorter. But, yeah. Let's get on with that. All right, there we go. The panel itself is, is complete. Um, wires don't really stretch very far for me to show you in detail but as you can see the LEDs work so a little bit more setting up to do so I can actually have it so that the lights correspond to something on the double slips I'm basically going to have it so that if the lights are on then the track's going straight on um, and then they'll get me head around it and that one's simple enough that's a single point going off to like a little branch line so that's an easy one and like that's a single point so that's just easy on off um, but yeah a little bit more setting up um, I've left a, a bit of a surround around this because I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do to it um, I can always trim it off easy enough but um, it will it will mount somewhere move the chair back a little bit spin the camera around it will mount somewhere like there so it may be a bit weird because it's not a million miles away from where the points are actually actually are um, but there's obviously going to be scenery and stuff like that in the way so um, and then just around a corner off um, kind of to the left of the screen is where the the main yard is going to be so there's going to be some points in there I will possibly have another panel here similar made the same as this and um, with another mega points controller power in that um, anyone who's sort of concerned about the amount of wiring there is on that's on this what you can do with mega points controllers are if you've got a lot of points situated in one area like I do here you can have the mega points controller 
situated in that area and then just extend the switch wires so um, I don't know if you can see right so these here are the switch wires so there's four of them four switch wires to power 12 servos so you can actually just have four of them going um, going all the way to your switch panel um, even better than that if you go if you get the DCCC DCCC module DCC module um, then you can have everything where the points are and just have a single network cable going back to your um, control area I think it just I don't think you need that I don't know something I've got to look into but yeah that is that is it for now um, can do a little bit more setting up but hopefully that's interesting um, like I said at the start this is in its most basic form there is way better ways of making these with perspex and things like that this is just a laminated piece of A4 paper stuck on a bit of wood at the end of the day and that I drew on paint so yeah I'm sure there's better ways out there but anyhow thanks for watching everybody and I will see you soon if you would like to watch the previous video click the top link if you would like to subscribe click the bottom link thank you